Lake 1, Conquistador Lake. Lake 2, Llano Estacado Lake. Lake 3, Comancheria Lake. Lake 4, Vaquero Lake, in McKenzie Park, where Blackwater Draw and Yellow House Draw converge. Lake 5, Canyon Lake, also in McKenzie Park. And Lake 6, Dunbar Historical Lake, The Canyon Lake system is one of the best things about Lubbock. Tranquil views, places to play, gather, nature, fishing, walking. But many don't know that all of this went from a city dump site to a planning and engineering marvel that had never been done before or since. It's probably one of the most innovative projects in the United States. When Jim Bertram came to Lubbock, he came as a teenager with a group of friends from South Texas enrolling at Texas Tech. It was there that he discovered his professional path and got his first job. Actually, it was the planning department at the city of Lubbock. I was, uh, while I was going through school, I had a part-time job there. Once I knew I wanted to go be in the field of city planning, uh, I got a part-time job. So I was working while I was going to school and they had a entry-level professional a planner one a position when I graduated for them. The associate planner resigned after the first year. I, I went up to associate planner and then he left. Uh, the senior planner, who was the department head, left and I uh, became the department head in 1968. During that time, the City of Lubbock Planning Department used a seemingly mundane mandate as an opportunity to hatch some pretty radical ideas and to dream bigger than ever. Well, in 1967, all cities our size were mandated to do an urban transportation plan. And one of the things you have to do is to project future land use. Uh, we came to the canyon and we said, well, how do we want to show the canyon? A lot of it, with the exception of McKenzie State Park, was industrial. It was zoned industrial. The city even had the first sanitary landfill in the canyon. And so it was is shown as dumb. Somehow they were mixing cottonseed uh, meal or something with oil or something. It was, there were big 50 gallon drums. It was the most awful looking thing I've ever seen. It was ranch land. It was, had mesquite trees and, you know, and it was grown up in weeds. And the sad part about it from the beginning when the planning department started the study was that for other than McKenzie Park, the rest of the canyon had been treated uh, as a convenient place to hide the ugliest part of our urbanization process, rather than looking at it as the greatest visual asset. So it wasn't like we had a clean slate to just start building lakes and parks. We had to claw it back from dump grounds and caliche pits and uh, asphalt batch plants. But opening and cleaning out the canyon wasn't where that seed of an idea stopped. It kept growing into something unheard of at the time, and especially for this near desert area. We sat down and, you know, we would sit down in brainstorming sessions about, uh, you know, when, when someone first said, let's, let's build dams and have lakes. <laughs> I think there were some people around the room who went, really? <laughs> we, we don't have any water. Well, I've heard about this project, in Santee, California, where they've done it on a small scale. So, well, Lubbock has no constant stream of water. And so he said, why don't we investigate using reclaimed water? I recall vividly in an open, open council meeting, a city council member asked me, he just point blank, he said, Jim, is this feasible? <laughs> or is this a pipe dream? Those were almost his exact words. And I said, I don't think it's a pipe dream because I know it's been done on a small scale. No one has attempted it on this large a scale. After studying Santee, California's small-scale version of using reclaimed water, and after doing a feasibility study, the city planning department took its nearly inconceivable idea to the citizens. And we looked at the feasibility of it and came up with a recommendation to build eight lakes in the canyon, use reclaimed water, and we got permission from the planning director to, to do a 35 millimeter slide presentation. We went around and showed that to civic clubs and just kind of pitched the idea. What do you think about this? We were skeptical about what kind of response we would get and we were overwhelmed by the support. When the civic clubs started 
sending letters to the council, the Lubbock Chamber of Commerce was developing the first goals program. And as it turned out, they debated this in the goals committee on, on recreation open space. And it ended up as the number one goal in the Lubbock goals for the 70s. It was just a matter of waiting for opportunity. And unfortunately, the Lubbock tornado became the opportunity. In my opinion, it was the catalyst because right after the tornado, the city council appointed, I think they called it a blue ribbon uh, recovery committee. And their, their responsibility was to look at all the needs and come up with a bond package to uh, present to the citizens to recover from the tornado. One of them was for the Civic Center, the Mahon Library. Um, I think there were funds in there for the airport at the time and for the Canyon Lakes system. After the bond election passed, Jim Bertram started work on the Canyon Lake system, but it was never smooth sailing. We hit some, some things that we thought were just total roadblocks. At times it was overwhelming. One of them was we had two $2.8 million in bond funds. And it was gonna cost 6.5. Well, when I sat down with the city manager and he said, just do the best you can, build as much as you can with what you have. We went after federal grants and we applied for a $1.7 million grant from the, the state parks and wildlife who got that money from the Bureau of Outdoor Recreation, which is a federal agency. We also applied to Housing and Urban Development, HUD, for an $835,000 grant. Well, when the Secretary of the Interior found out about our project, he had, a, he had what he called uh, Secretary of Interior uh, contingency funds for innovative projects. So he called the, the Bureau of Outdoor Recreation or Parks Department in, in uh, in the state of Texas, and he said, if you will fund 1.7, I will match it with 1.7 million of contingency funds. So that gave us 3.4 million from Bureau of Outdoor Recreation, and HUD approved our $835,000 grant. That left us about 4.2 million. Then our dilemma was we had too much grant money. So what started out as a $2.8 million project ended up in the vicinity of a $10 million project because of all the um, contributions that we got. So the money issue was solved, but then came the next roadblock. City manager uh, turned the project over to the planning department. Uh, I, I recall somewhat in a humorous manner, but somewhat in a frightening manner that he forgot to tell me the Corps of Engineers dumped all the tornado debris in the canyon. We knew that we were gonna to have to cover up the tornado debris, which was dumped up just uh, up near Lake One. And, uh, and we knew we were gonna to have to deepen the lakes to keep them from getting totally covered with cattails. So we went to Clark Equipment Company, who manufactures the big 16 and a half yard scrapers. And we asked them how they'd like to test their equipment in our project. And <laughs> They said, sure, we'd, we'd like that if you'll just give us some publicity. And so we started deepening the lakes and widening the lakes and putting the fill on top of the tornado debris to hide it and compact it. As soon as the debris was covered, the next roadblock surfaced. While working toward the future of Lubbock, crews uncovered remarkable things from its past. Yeah, when we, when we dug the trench for the foundation for the, for the first dam, you could walk through that trench and pull bones of ancient bison out of the walls of that cut. Jaw bones, horns, uh, femur bones, rib bone. There's two levels of archeological study. They had to do a preliminary, but they went through there and they also found uh, Indian campfire sites with, with flints, you know, arrowhead flints, spearheads. And we, we approached certain points and like, are we crazy? <laughs> Why do we think this was possible? I used to wake up every day during this project praying to the Lord for wisdom because I sure felt overwhelmed. The most amazing thing is that people still don't understand that it's reclaimed water. The first use is domestic use. In our case, the second use is to water agriculture. 
It, when we drilled down in that aquifer right beneath the agricultural area, brought it back up, pumped it in the lakes, that became the third use for recreation. Uh, we ended up, the water source for the Canyon Lakes was 26 wells drilled on that agricultural area out there and collected it. And it was the land itself that filtered the water. Put it in a pump station, pump it back upstream and release it and let it flow by gravity through the lakes. And uh, now I understand the city's talking about Lake Seven, which has come full circle back to domestic use again. So it's actually four uses of the same, same water. And it will be, you know, that's a blank slate. The city can do what they want to with it. They either allow housing development or make that an extension of the, of, of the land there. Uh, so that the beauty of the canyon, you know, can be the focal point. And there were so many people that worked on it. There were so many people that uh, it would, never would have happened, you know, if it had not been for that, that team effort. So, well, obviously it makes me very proud and, and humble just to have been a part of it. And I look back now and, uh, and I, I think, um, so many things happened that I had no explanation of, of how things came together, except uh, I think it must have been blessed by the Lord, it just fell into place. And so the timing, as tragic as it was, uh, because of the tornado, uh, I don't think it could have happened any other way. There were too many, too many roadblocks, too many things where that could have totally stopped it, but. Uh, I think I think we were I think our community was blessed. I really do. At 1,600 acres, the Jim Bertram Canyon Lake system is still the largest reclaimed water system in the United States. A continued testament to the vision and the tenacity of those that chose to think bigger.